Annapurnia with your host, MoFo, only on LA Talk Radio. So, what do you get when you mix weed and porn together? California! You are now tuned in to California. Now here's your host, the one and only Mofo. Okay, trying this the second time. <laughs> we had some technical problems the first time. But here we are again. And again, I'm gonna introduce one of the I think one of the most beautiful porn stars we've ever had on the show dude your face is <laughs> like you. unbelievable she's like a like mainstream actress beautiful i was like tripping out like damn look at her and then she has i was telling her she has that perfect like taboo porn look <laughs> right <laughs> free meals i'm coming after you no i'm kidding yeah like you just want to see an old guy fuck that shit out of her i do have a daddy <laughs> fetish though i mean you know <laughs> <laughs> and huge huge news tonight huge announcement we are on Facebook. Yay. Facebook. Now, let's see how long it lasts on <laughs> right. there. Because, you know, I kept asking the owner, are you sure we can be on Facebook? We can cuss and everything. He goes, yeah. He goes, like, don't worry about it. So, fuck it. I feel like as long as there's no nudity, we should be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I think everything else is fine. Yeah. As long as there's no pussies or gaping assholes. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, what I'm good at. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> are you? Are you? Are you good at the gaping assholes? Yes, gaping asshole, yes. Uh, vagina, no, which I didn't even know they can really gape until fairly recently. Well, do you want that? Would you Would no. you want a gaping pussy? A pussy, no. Um, asshole, definitely. Um, I love seeing it just gape, and then I like shoving things inside it. Um, my vagina is a little bit different, though. I actually did this for a scene um, a couple years back. It was a solo scene, and I shoved... Now, mind you, I've had my vagina sur surgically tightened. That's a different story. Whoa! Yes. Okay, we got to get to that later. Yes, but uh, they shoved 35 paintbrushes up my vagina, and I did the most beautiful thing. I was sitting down just like this, and I had my ass arched, and I literally drew a heart with my vagina, and it was the most beautiful, like, watercolor kind of yeah. painting. And I was so mad because I lost it recently when I moved, and I threw so, such a temper tantrum because I really loved it. Wow, 35 paintbrushes. But they were, like, How very wide was tiny. That? But yeah. yes, it was. Oh, okay. But still, 35, that's kind of a lot. That's like a fist. Yeah. Now, have you, oh, you've done the fisting, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, have, uh, has a guy fisted you? Um. Yes, actually. I had to think about that for a minute. Yeah. Damn. Uh, my first one was Francesca Lay, or Laywood. Mm -hmm. uh, that was for kink.com. Kink it was honestly, it was amazing. I loved it. I couldn't stop screaming in orgasms. I loved it. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how, how deep did she fist you? Like to her wrist, her forearm, um, her elbow, her shoulder? About here. Her shoulder? Okay. <laughs> You know, I can kind of take a lot, you know, but yeah. that's kind of my limit. Yeah. Do you ever watch those like, uh, I can't think of his name. I think it's Dr. Pole, the incredible Dr. Pole, when he sticks his arm like all the way up the cow's asshole, or is it pussy? I do feel like cows it's an have asshole. a pussy? I don't think they do. No? No. Well, so when a <laughs> bull fucks a cow, it's fucking the asshole? I feel like it would be. Because okay. they don't really have any like vaginal openings like women or pretty much anyone. You know what I mean? Okay. Speaking of animals with pussies. Have you seen a dolphin pussy? No. Oh. Is it something I should look up? Google it. You <laughs> will trip out. If you, if you guys out there haven't seen a dolphin pussy, it looks just like a woman's pussy. I'm kind of intrigued, and I will look this yeah, up. Put, That's put dolphin pussy. If you, you guys are at home, Google dolphin pussy. I've tweeted, I've tweeted about it. Dude, it looks just like a woman's pussy. Like, I think if you're chilling with a dolphin and you get fucked up enough, uh, <laughs> you might fuck that pussy. That's just <laughs> nasty, no. Because, see, I always thought you can only fuck like a, <gasps> if you're going to fuck a dolphin, right? That's if you're going to so fuck a dolphin, weird. you would fuck the blowhole, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not going to lie. That would be my first thought, too, is the blowhole. Yeah, yeah and plus uh, it's wet. You know, it looks big enough. You know, you just hold on to the fin. Right, and, and just fuck it. jam it in there. <laughs> but... Yeah, did you did you find it? Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. This is uh, this Are is, you tripping out? I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little confused because when I looked it up, I could see the actual whale's vagina, and then right next to it was a BBW. So I was like, I don't know which one I'm supposed Ooh. to look at because <laughs> they look the same. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm I telling you, that way the uh, the camera doesn't catch it. 
But as you yeah. can see on the right, there's like a BBW just like okay. chilling, and then there's the <laughs> like I don't know which one to look at first. But yes, I yeah, do see the, the dolphin vagina. There's there's one picture in particular. It looks beautiful. <laughs> it looks just like a beautiful pussy. So a dolphin vagina. And uh, I don't know what you're doing with your time, but uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to Bolsa Chica State Beach and trying to fuck dolphins. But um. Okay, wait a minute. How in the hell did we get there? <laughs> where, where did we start? Okay, so yeah, we're on Facebook. This is very exciting. Um, and my Facebook is, oh, if you don't know what it is, it's Oklahoma Sanchez. I know you're like, what the fuck does that have to do with MofaWare or California? Uh, that's just how I started. Oh, no. Now I remember. <coughs> I didn't do MofaWare because uh, Facebook wouldn't let me. Years, years ago. It wouldn't let that's me use it as a username. So I'm like, what the fuck? Right. And I've always been into names with that are like states like Nebraska, Gomez, uh, Atlanta, Garcia. <laughs> I don't know. Nice. So I had Oklahoma Sanchez because it was a it was a comic book right. that I had started. Right. Uh, and the superhero's name was Oklahoma Sanchez. Nice. Yeah. And, and he gets his. Uh, you know, have you heard of guys tipping over cows? No, I haven't. Well. I like I've I've always heard I don't know it's true but like in Oklahoma Nebraska places like that I guess when the dudes get bored they'll go get drunk whatever and they'll tip over cows I've heard of cow tipping yeah, yeah. okay that's okay. what it is oh okay cool. okay and um so but what Oklahoma Sanchez does what he doesn't realize one night him and his buddies they go to you know cow tipping mm -hmm. but one of these cows had a boyfriend this oh shit huge bull oh shit and basically it fucking tipped them. Yeah, it it hits uh, Oklahoma Sanchez, and he falls into like a uh, what do you call the phone uh, wires? Oh, okay, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. gets electrocuted, and then he gets superpowers. <laughs> <laughs> the, I, I feel like the, you know so much more than me, and I feel like this is going to be one of those settings where I'm just absorbing everything you're telling me. <laughs> yeah, and uh, anyway, so that's the comic book. Okay. You know, the adventures of Oklahoma Sanchez. And that's how, that's how he gets his uh, superpowers. Mm -hmm. And I also made this other one. Uh, have you heard of a porno called The Adventures of the Fart Bitches? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have not. That was actually a full budget, big production <laughs> porno I directed and wrote. Really? It, yes, in 1998. Okay. It came out. And it was called The Adventures of the Fart Bitches. I'm actually going to watch that now. And even Avian Magazine, they were like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> right? Like, why are you putting this shit on? And you know who the star was? Hmm. Nina Hartley. Yeah, <laughs> Nina Hartley. No. Now, you got to remember, this was the first, like, full production, like, professional porno I ever made. Right. And nobody knew who the fuck I was. Right. I really just came out of nowhere. I just had a pr this producer, and he sent me uh to go make this porno right he gave, you know he, he said don't worry about the budget da, 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 da. so i went to um i think it was called world modeling okay and the m main guy was jim south okay he ran it and i walk in there okay now remember this is the 90s mm -hmm. okay there's not too many mexicans around <laughs> right right so i walk in there and uh they're like okay is this guy what's he to, want yeah is he here to fucking clean the the, the building or park, right. park the cars <laughs> you know? wash my you know car windows yeah. or some shit? Yeah. yeah so i walk in there i walk in there i go hey uh you know i want to um direct uh this porno i have a producer and they're like okay you know we'll sit over there there's books of the girls just look through the books and you tell us what girls you want and uh i was like okay i go well i'm into asses so i really kind of want just girls with big asses and then they're like, oh, okay. Then they recommended Nina Hartley right away. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. And then like, oh, anyway, they go, hey, what is it? You know, what is it? Is it a straight porn? Boy, girls, it, you know, anal or whatever. I go, well, it's called Adventures of the Fart Bitches. <laughs> and they're like, what? If I was an agent, I'd be like, you need to get the fuck out of my office. Like right <laughs> yeah. now. What the fuck exactly. are you talking about? Uh, yeah, exactly. I go, no, it's Adventures of the Fart Bitches. And they're these uh, girls. They're, they're, they're a team of superheroes from oh, another planet. Right. And their, and their powers are, are uh, farting. Their f their farts are just extremely powerful. Like queefing or yeah. farting? No, farting. Okay. Farting. And what they do is they fight crime. But, like, let's say a guy's raping a girl. They'll stop the rape, right? And then they'll somehow get the guy, put put his 
face like right in their ass and then they fart his head off <laughs> and i made and I, yeah, and I had the heads made real heads and you should see the guys when i'm describing the movie to them mm -hmm. you know in this studio they're yeah. all like what the fuck right yeah is, is this candid camera what's going on here yeah but anyway that was adventures of the farm uh, adventures of the far bitches i gotta watch that and that's where oklahoma sanchez comes through and i feel like that was a real long way to tell you how to get to my facebook it's <laughs> oklahoma sanchez that's my facebook so we're on facebook right now and we're also on la take latalkradio.com yes, and then are. tomorrow uh, after 7 or 8 o'clock at night depending what time I get off of work I'll upload it on my YouTube Canapornia channel Yes, it's on uh, YouTube all my shows are on there so you can purge if you wanted some Canapornia purge. And, um, but here we are with Miranda Miller hi guys um, before we forget what's your social media where can they find you my social media is pretty much the same thing. Uh, Twitter and Instagram is Miranda Miller double X and Snapchat is via my email, which is Miranda Miller triple X at gmail.com. Okay. So, you know who you kind of reminded me of mm. when I first seen you? Uh, oh shit. I get this a lot. <laughs> is this actress. Now this is, this is only when she was in this movie. Okay. She was in, her name is Selma Blair. She was in Hellboy. I feel like I know that. You know what? I got to look that up. Yeah. Look for Selma Blair in Hellboy. Cause that's the only time I thought she looked like you. That's when she kind of reminded me of you. You know what's funny is I get random. Um, you said I was Hellboy. Yeah, Hellboy. The I get movie. The, Hellboy movie. Yeah, I get the most random shit sometimes. Like, hey, you know, you look like this, uh, this so and so porn star, and I like look them up. I'm like, I look nothing like them. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like you don't know how to say. Yes <laughs> let's, or see no what, let's see what you think right now. Right. I mean, do you guys? Is that what you, you guys think? Okay. Do you guys see it? I see it. Yeah. I definitely see it. And then I get ones where it's like, you look like Anne Hathaway, and I'm like. I look like an awkward potato. I don't look like Anne Hathaway. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think you look like Selma Blair. I see it. She's got like a badass look to her. Yeah, she's hot. She's hot. She was good in the movie. They're uh, they're making another Hellboy right now, I think. Really? Yeah. Are you into the comic book movies? Um, not like really. X Men, The Avengers, Black Panther. Oh, Avengers! All that. Uh, yeah, um, I definitely do try to stay, up, you know, up to date as much it's as I can. It's hard to. Yes, definitely. There's um, so many of them. Exactly, and because they do mainstream on the side, um, I just did my first official movie. I can't talk too much about it, but it's called One Remains. Oh, cool. Which is a very big thing. It was. Uh, it's a horror movie, which will be out oh, in theaters yes. this August yeah. in over 800 theaters, Netflix, and Hulu. Wow. So, yeah. what hey. it means, guys? Thank you. Congratulations. Um, it's Congratulations. produced. By, thank you. It's uh, produced by Sony, so it's a very big deal. Um, I yeah. loved it. It was the cast is great, and I can't wait to be back with them. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I'll now, give you a little um, spoiler. Um, I died twice in the movie. How twice. did someone die twice? Yes, twice. I'm gonna guess you're a zombie. No. Oh damn. <laughs> Do you like zombie shit? Do I you love watch The Walking shit. Dead. Huh? Do you watch The Walking Dead? Yeah, I used to, but then I got bored. Because the thing is, is like. <sighs> I watched it when I was 18, and then I just started binge watching like the first two seasons, and then I'm like, okay, where's Carl? Like half the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I found out he died, and I was like, I can't watch it. I can't try to like go back. Same thing with uh, Grey's Anatomy. Like I binge watched the first nine seasons, and I fell in love with it. And then the tenth came out, and I went so long without watching it. So when I tried to go back and watch it, I got frustrated, and I was like, fuck this. Yeah. Like I yeah, tried I'm a so little, hard. I'm a little burnt out on The Walking Dead. Yeah. Me, me and my wife watch it, and uh, but this season we we're kind of like, mm. right. You know, uh, I mean, we'll still keep on watching it, but yeah, we're getting there. Um, now, on your Twitter profile, you're, I think you said something like, "Oh, we got the notes, guys." Loves oh, okay. Netflix and sex. Yes. What are you watching on Netflix? Oh God, everything. Um, are you watching that Black Mirror? You know, uh, my parents told me to watch it, but I haven't yet. Um, I think you'll like it. I watch American Horror Story. I love oh. American Horror Story. Uh, I've seen every single season. I love it. I'm obsessed with it. Um, my most favorite right now is How to Get Away with Murder. Um, have you seen that? No, I haven't seen that one. It's a really different kind of a show, and it's nothing what I expected. Um, right. So first of all, it starts with a certain lawyer. She's um, teaching a class and things like that. And literally, the first thing she says is, I'm on Elise Keating, and I'm actually going to teach you how to be in a courtroom and how to get away with murder. And as soon as she said that, I was like, oh, shit, now i got to watch this. Yeah. And it's basically about covering um, a dead body and how to hide the tracks, and then it interludes to everything else. And it's actually it's really good. Oh, cool. um, that, like I said, Grey's Anatomy, which broke my heart. But um, just little things. I like drama. I like horror and just something that's really going to captivate me. Yeah, I love sci-fi shit because I'm all into aliens and Bigfoot and 
all that stuff. So, mm-hmm. uh, but they need more of that. They, I think they need more scary movies too on Netflix. They do. Yeah. I want something that's definitely going to make me cringe my seat and go, "What the fuck am I watching?" Like uh, yeah. the last um, American Horror Story. I can't remember the name. Oh, the Roanoke. Uh, that one actually yeah. scared the shit out of me. No joke. Yeah. It was one of those where it's like because they brought in the actors from the Roanoke and then the actual victims from Roanoke, so they put the two together in a house and then everyone just starts dying and it's like, what's going on? Yeah. No, my favorite season was the one in the hotel. Oh, I love that one. Especially I can't think of the name of it now. Uh, um, it's called the hotel, I think. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lady Gaga oh, was that. so promiscuous oh. and narcissistic, and I loved it. The very remember the opening scene. It's her and they go sit. They seduce that couple. Yes. Oh, that's the opening scene. That was so hot. Oh, to that Marilyn Manson song. I can't oh. think of it right now. Tear I still you apart, have it. I I st- yeah. 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 I still have it on my DVR. It's nice. the best. It starts off with her doing coke and then fucking the shit out of each other and then uh you, you gotta see it it's i'm not really gonna good. lie i've definitely masturbated that scene many a times especially yeah. that song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a good one the hotel mm-hmm. um i also like the scene from there when um the i can't think of her name right now the black actress when uh when when she when she kills her no when lady gaga kills her lover it's like a seventies kind of black yeah. exploitation thing they're doing. Yeah. Oh, I love that scene. Yeah. I think I have that on my DVR too. But yeah, that's my favorite that's my favorite part. But okay. We're gonna start talking about porn now. Oh no. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. And uh, now you uh started porn like pretty young. Yes, eighteen. Yeah. Yeah. Now what made you, what made you get into it? You know, that's honestly, it's a really funny answer. Um, and it's kind of different than most. So do you know the app Whisper? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I saw this advertisement and I had an official girlfriend at the time. I'm bisexual. I love women. Uh, and this guy was like, hey, uh, I want to, he's basically advertising. He wants a threesome with his girlfriend. So I was like, hey, I'm kind of learning about girls. I maybe want to try this. So then I asked my girlfriend, do you want to have a foursome? She was like, yeah, let's do it. And then I met him. And uh, he actually paid me $700. And I was like, I don't need the money. Like, this isn't a thing. He's like, no, I'm not paying you for doing this. I'm paying you because I want you to come back. And I was like, huh? He was like, I want you to come and party with my girlfriend. And I want her to have a good time. It's all about her. So if I need to pay you or whatever it is, you're coming back. Wow. You got lucky right off the bat. I did. So I was like, fuck it. I'm literally, you know, paid to drink and have sex with women. What is this shit? So then um, I was currently a manager. Um, I was doing a computer work. Am I allowed to say what the name is? Yeah. Okay, at Best Buy. Uh, So at that point, I was like, you know what? I'm making a lot of money, and I'm just hanging out. I'm really having a good time. Maybe I should try to get into this. But what I did know, plot twist, is that they what he had told me is that basically the scene, I'll give you $2,000 for the scene, but I want to let you know um, it's anal. (coughs) So I'm going, oh, okay, whatever. But Have you done anal? No. My first time on camera or with anal was on camera. But he was that big, so I got lucky. (laughs) So that's dumb. <laughs> literally that big the first thing he says to me is don't worry i'm not that big i'm this big so you won't shit on me and i'm like oh god that makes it so much worse <laughs> so he told me he's like look it's gonna be one video you're not gonna you really did get lucky you, <laughs> she's getting paid and the guy has a small dick for anal wow <laughs> so then uh we get through the scene i had a great time everything was great uh but it starts blowing up so i'm gonna go what starts shit blowing up the scene and he had oh, told me okay. that it was just gonna be one scene it was you know under the rug and it was done Right. that it would never come up again. So then I ended up going to AVN, and then um, I met my first agent, Dave from Motley. Super great, everything. Um, I was living in Arizona at the time. So Dave flies me out, everything's great. And then what happened was, is I, uh, long story short, I posted on Facebook that, hey, I'm going to be going to LA for, to visit a friend. Now, what I didn't know is I had told the producer, do not tag me, do not put anything. So what the producer does is tags me in like a half-naked thing on Facebook where I'm friends with my mom. Oh, no. So I get a phone call. Miranda Kepa, and she just like starts screaming at Spanish. me. Spanish. Yes. I'm what half, are you? I'm half Hispanic, half white. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm a weird mutt. So she just starts screaming at me, and I'm in the middle of the shoot. So I'm going, well, thank God it's a solo shoot, but I'm going, fuck. How do I get out of this? So I ended up hanging up on her, <laughs> and I got through the shoot, and then the next day I called her, I was like, I kind of owe you an explanation. She's like, how dare you? And she just hated me. <laughs> oh, fuck. For like the first year I was in porn, legitimately did not talk to me. Yeah. But the thing was, is I was, my mom and I had a falling out when I was 17. Uh-huh. So when she found out, I said, look, I'm making a lot of money and I'm happy. You can either choose to be in my life or not, but I'm not here. I don't need your support financially, physically or anything or right. mentally, you know? 
So yeah. fuck it. I'm going to be 18. And then when you get, you know, they, what they do is they'll send you out. They'll put you in the model house, get tested. And I'm partying with a bunch of girls making ridiculous amounts of money. Why the fuck am I going to care about anything else? Yeah. You know, when you first start in, you're <laughs> blowing up. You're getting shoots left and right. I'm excited. The money's coming in. I'm hanging out. I'm partying with girls. Why not? Yeah. You know. Fuck. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Well, that's cool. <laughs> so you're... You start. You got real lucky, and it was a great experience right off the bat. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. That's super cool because it's not always like that. No. Not always like that, but it's mainly like that. I mean, the porn industry can be a great industry, just like any other industry. If Absolutely. you have your shit together, Absolutely. you gotta have your shit together. Uh, and what I mean by that is that means you know keeping yourself looking good, um, making great you know good good choices, right. uh, good business decisions promoting yourself i mean there's a lot of things to it but it's nothing like any um it's not bad okay it's Absolutely. not bad um so if you're thinking of getting into porn industry just usually what i recommend to people is talk to the girls talk to girls that are successful i advise against uh, that Oh, really? Yes, absolutely. And the reason being is because we get flooded with hundreds, including myself, hundreds of emails. How do I get into porn? Hey, I know you're successful and blowing up my notifications and everything because of that. All they can really do is just search adult talent finders or adult XXX industry or adult talent managers. And once you do that, you'll have agencies like that. There you go. I just got schooled. Because the last thing we <laughs> want to see is our inbox full of, because we, we sell things. We sell our uh, premium Snapchat, our customs, and things like that. I don't need to see 200 emails a day. Hey, how do I get into porn? I have a big cock, so it's, I don't care about that. I'm not, you know what I mean? I'm right. too busy with my day to be dealing with all that. Yeah. So it's just as simply as, you know, Googling it. It's that easy. Yeah. Now, okay, obviously you're young. You know how the industry works now. Yes. Is it, obviously, is is how much more than just shooting do you have to do? A lot. Like, a lot, absolutely. Um, when I first got in, I really wasn't taking care of myself. Um, I just recently started smoking pot, so really, <laughs> pun intended. Uh, I let go of myself a lot. I wasn't really, like I said, taking care of myself. I was gaining weight. I was feeling lethargic. I wasn't really doing anything. I go to the gym five days a week now. I eat completely healthy. I try to keep drinking to a minimum. I really take care of myself. And the thing yeah. is, is that you see that over time. Like, I'll show you a picture, a perfect example. Um, this well, you can tell by your face. Her face is, looks super healthy. Thank you. I mean, I mean, you can kind of tell the girls that don't take care of themselves and that are doing too many what I call hardcore drugs. Yeah. Okay. To me, weed is not a drug. No. Cannabis is not a drug. You know the other things I'm talking about. And that the other shit will show on your face. It'll age you quick. Exactly. And you can uh, tell by the behaviors because they're constantly scratching themselves or they're <laughs> constantly talking too fast. I do that because I'm nervous and I'm awkward. But it's like yeah. you can just you genuinely can tell. And I've seen fans actually say, hey, I can tell that person's tweaked out during the scene. Right. And that's so sad because that ruins the fantasy for them. And it, and it shortens their career. It really does, though. A lot. A lot. Like, now, if I want to see a girl get railed in the ass, I want to see that. I don't want to see her in pain or she looks uncomfortable. You know what I mean? And that's my thing with my scenes is I try my hardest to truly enjoy what I do. And I do. So there's a perfect example of a month ago versus what I'm doing right now. Wow. And that's from strictly cutting out alcohol and starting to eat actually healthy. And the thing is, when you do that, you start to feel better. You wake up in the morning. You don't necessarily need that cup of coffee anymore. You're energized throughout the day because you went to the gym, you're excited, and then you get some, you know, sex yeah. in there. But, you know, at the same time, it's like, you know what I mean? But you really do. Yeah. You have to take care of yourself. You have to market yourself. You have to brand yourself. You have to constantly update certain websites like many vids, clips for sale, OnlyFans, things like that. Now, when you say brand yourself, kind of explain that a little bit more. What exactly do you mean by that, branding yourself? So I'll give my example. Um, I try to keep, uh, obviously, my stage name is Miranda Miller. I try to keep her very innocent and very sweet. And when I'm doing that, and what I mean by that is when I'm making these videos, I want to keep it that way. So you're not going to see me doing any heavy, not necessarily heavy metal, but anything that doesn't look unsweet and proper and innocent. Right. Like you're not going to see me rage out and doing, hell, I don't know, a line of coke or something like that. You're going yeah. to see me doing something innocent or doing a strip tease to like the weekend or talking about how I want to fuck my stepdaddy, just keeping it in that kind of mentality. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's, that's what we were talking about before we came on air. I like when I first seen her, I told her, oh, my God, you have like the perfect look for taboo porn. And what I mean by taboo porn is usually taboo porn uh, is usually like the stepdaughter and stepdad, uh, the aunt and the niece, uh, things like that. And and usually the girls are very kind of like innocent looking, young, innocent looking. And 
that works because it's believable. It's more believable to the guy who's jerking off to it. Yeah. No guy's going to believe some 25 year old kind of like biker looking chick, exactly. all tough and shit is the innocent little stepdaughter. <laughs> right. You know, it just doesn't sell it as much. I mean, no. you can do it that way, but it just doesn't sell it as much if you're going for that, that taboo porn type where it's the, the innocent girl. Exactly. Okay. And that's what I was, uh, we were talking about. And the other thing too, that you do good is I told her her Instagram is pretty clean. It's pretty like normal. And what I mean by that is there's really no nasty mm -hmm. pictures on there and whatever. And we also were talking about how everybody might be having to start doing that because, know. you know, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, have all been coming out with these announcements this week mm -hmm. about that. They're going to start cracking down yeah. basically big time. Yeah. So I've even seen some girls now on my Twitter timeline saying, Hey, don't retweet any of my porn shit and nasty pictures no more. Really? Yeah. A lot of girls are already taking down shit. The stuff. I don't know. You that. know, uh, but to me, a retweet is completely different. I don't think Twitter is going to be like, Oh shit. There's a porn scene of you that somebody else posted. It's not going to be like that. No, I think they'll shut down their account before they yeah. shut down yours. Yeah. So, um, now that's another thing I've noticed that's kind of going on right now. Uh, period. All of a sudden, it seems like everybody's attacking or trying to bring down like the sex industry and sex workers and stuff. That started, I think, right around when I got in because the first year wasn't as bad, but lately it's just been honestly just monstrous when I don't know what it is. There's just something that somebody got a hair up their ass where it's like, hey, no more porn. And it's like, why? Yeah. Well, it's like and it's gone. It's gone even past like the regulation. Like, you know, I, I kind of wrote down earlier. It seems like it's not just being regulated like they want porn stars exterminated they really do and that's and the thing is we don't yeah. understand why yeah it's like all of a sudden and it's like dude it's 2018 right the one year to do it yeah and uh it just seems like and it seems like there's constant a new bill and the government going through new laws just constant crackdown if this doesn't pass let's try this if we can't take them down doing this, let's take them down doing that. Right. You know, and it's like, fuck. And the problem is it's hard to fight the government because they have all the resources and the money. Mm -hmm. You know, there's only so many organizations and petitions that can and fight everything. Them, exactly. You know, but uh, anyway, so if you guys are out there, if you, if you watch porn, especially if you jerk off to porn, you Which got you got to support the porn industry, man. You got to support the industry with votes, uh, with, you know, with money. Uh, and support the girls buy their porn, uh, their uh, all their uh, Snapchats and OnlyFans and all these other things, mm -hmm. you know. Because right now, dude, uh, it's it's looking bad. I mean, there's things passing through the Congress. It seems like every fucking other week. It is, and it's annoying. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure we can't even sell sex or quote unquote sex on uh, Skype shows anymore. Yeah. So, and I mean, that's getting pretty ridiculous. And it's just sex. This is what I trip on on, like. Think about it. It's just basically a guy looking at, at a girl. She's doing her thing on the bed and he's just jerking off. And that's it. That's literally it. <laughs> There's nothing it's, illegal. That's, that's it. about it. And these guys are usually just kind of, they're really just kind of like normal dudes, man. They have you regular know. jobs just like the rest of us, but they just want to sit there and, you know, touch themselves to us touching ourselves. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Now, like the shit they should crack down. I was watching this. Where is it? Let me show Oh, wait a minute. Before I get there, I was reading something that where you, you kind of describe yourself as very submissive. Yes. What do you, what do you mean by that? Uh, I wish I could actually show this, but I'm not wearing underwear. So I actually had a session. Well, <laughs> no, because I have the bruising. Uh, I did a BDSM session and it was my first real session. Now what's um, BDSM? Um, the full chains, whips, uh, paddles, dungeon, uh, like kink basically. Yeah. And when I shot for kink, I love them. I had the greatest time. But the thing with kink is that I have to worry about angles. I have to worry about lighting. And it kind of, it doesn't let me fully surrender myself into the role, into the submission of just being in there and yeah. just letting everything go. Um, I had my first actual session with somebody that was experienced and that is in the industry. And that was beyond anything I think I'd ever felt. And I orgasms, orgasms so hard, I squirted. And I've never done that. Squirted. Yes. Yeah. Fully squirted uh, everywhere. <laughs> but um, it's, basically the fact of just letting someone take over you now what exactly was making you squirt what were they doing <laughs> uh i actually have pictures of it uh basically mm -hmm. what he had me do was lay on my back 
and I was tied. I wasn't tied. I was uh, handcuffed to where I was like this, and then both of my legs were handcuffed. So I'm basically stranded, and I can't do anything. To a table, like yes, exactly. And I'll show you these pictures. And what he was doing is, like I said, I've had um, work done on my vagina, so my clit is very, very, very sensitive. Okay, he had me completely like this. So basically, to the audience, I'm just fully strapped down. I can't move. I can't do anything. And so I'm biting my jeans so I can't speak because we were in a dungeon. And he put my vibrator or the vibrator on. Now, mind you, the highest I usually go is the first setting because I've had work done. Yeah. He put it on the fourth setting and it was so high and so intense. On your pussy? Yes. Your clitoris? Yes. He fully put the vibrator on my, you know, clip and he goes, you have to come and you can't, I'm not going to stop until you do. So I literally had to power through that and the orgasm was so intense. I just scored it everywhere. Damn. Yeah, it was a very hot moment. <laughs> where can where can work where, where can they see this? Uh that will be on OnlyFans fairly soon. Okay, OnlyFans. Yeah. What is what exactly is OnlyFans? OnlyFans is interesting this because picture's hot. I could jerk off to this picture. Fuck. <laughs> well you should actually oh what? I'll show you a different one. Yeah. Uh OnlyFans used to be about porn, it was adult friendly, and then now I found out all of a sudden they don't even allow penetration anymore. No, which is some damn. bullshit to be honest with you. Uh but that was immediately right after the session. I am a week and a half into these bruises, and they are so bad. I cannot shoot because of it, and I'm totally okay with that. <laughs> Man, dude, you got a good big ass. Thank you. Uh, I've been working hard. Nice. Squats and treadmill. Not going to lie. Miranda Miller. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I wish I could show these damn it to the camera. They look really good. Now, um, after squirting, that fir- was that your first time squirting? Yes, officially. Dude, how trippy was that? Were you like, fuck. Oh, I was blindfolded. How far were you squirting? Like, I couldn't use see. this table. Well, I Farted couldn't see this table. <laughs> I don't know. I was blindfolded and yeah. I was gagged. And now, are was, you squirting in somebody's face? Again, I don't know. I was blindfolded the whole time. Oh, the whole time. The you're whole blindfolded. time. Oh, I fuck. didn't have a That's choice intense. on what I did. And he, I don't want to say beat me, but he, when we were in the session, he used a lot of things on me. Like, they were intense. Uh, he used a cane on me. And okay. the problem with a cane is I didn't know this. Uh, there's two types of ways to hit someone there's a little light but there's no pressure so it leaves a little bit of a sting and then there's a lot of hard and a lot of weight now where's he hitting you with the cane everywhere from the soles of my feet to the back of my neck everywhere and i was in love with it damn um he used a cane he used a whip he used a paddle he used anything he could (laughs) and i now the turn on of the blindfold if you've never been blindfolded before you don't know where you're gonna get hit exactly (laughs) <laughs> exactly. Like, is he gonna fucking hit my nipple? Is he gonna hit my fucking clitoris? Is he gonna hit my thigh? Is he gonna smack me? Is yeah. he gonna? You know what I mean? You don't know what to expect, and I love that feeling. Now, other than that, okay. In BDSM, is there intercourse? Does he ever fuck you? Um, he did not. know. he did penetrate me with fingers, but that was it. Okay. Does he fist you? Uh, he didn't that time, but he will next time. Okay. Yeah. Next time, yes. you're doing another one. Yes. Look at you. Yes. Look at you. See. <laughs> innocent but nasty as fuck oh my god i <laughs> she's nasty as fuck i try Love to be it. and then uh um, yeah. pretty much other than that is my stepdaddy fetish um i've been engaged three times every fiance i've had is either 45 or 49 like wow. i have to be in that range and there's a joke between myself and my quasar which is i believe he's 48 the director yeah and he made a or i think it was vienna black that made a stupid comment like oh you're old enough to be my stepdad or my stepdaddy because that was one of the movies we were doing and my quasar turns to me and he goes I'm old enough to be your dad, but I'm not old enough to be your husband. And we just started laughing. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> just the irony of that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. That's super cool. I've always had a thing for older men, and I always get the question, do you have daddy issues? It's like, no, I'm just attracted to older men. Right. Because they're more dominant. They know how to handle certain situations versus men that are my age really don't know how to be a proper dom or really how to take control over someone. And once you're done with the session or whatever you're doing to take care of you and make sure you're okay and hold you and do things like that. Yeah. You know now. Okay. Now is this only with men or how are you with girls? Cause you said you were bisexual. Yes, I am. Um, with men, I'm definitely more of a submissive when it comes to women. I'm more of a dominant. I love seeing women squirm when it comes to that kind of sense. I'm obviously, you know, using safe words and things like that, but I love seeing them orgasm. That's yeah. so much better for me. And that gives me a bigger release seeing them do that. Do you like fucking girls that strap on dildos? I do, but it's, a, I'm not going to lie. It's a lot of work. <laughs> now, what do you mean? Uh, different positions like missionary, uh, depending on which way you're going to hold her. You have to use a lot of knee work. What's the best, what's the best position? Best position. Um, 
Honestly, spoon or doggy, because in both situations, she can kind of take care of it herself. And the reason being is, let's say I'm going too hard or it's too big on her. Mm -hmm. And in certain shoots, you kind of you can't control how big the strap on is. Right. So it's easier for her to kind of get comfortable with it first. And then I fuck the shit out of her. <laughs> now, do you ever do any in your personal life? Yes. In private? Yes. <laughs> now, OK, what's what size dildo do you use in your private? Life? Pretty big. Yeah. <laughs> I want to say between nine and a half and ten inches. Fuck. Yes. I am a masochist by every single mean. Like, maybe a little bit bigger than that. Maybe yeah. Maybe bigger than that. Definitely. Now, do you have, um, when you go out, Yeah. okay, are you kind of like open to hooking up with anybody, guy or a girl? No, I keep it, in, oh, well, I keep it industry only in that sense, but yes, I'm usually, I'm weird. Now, uh, what does that mean, industry only? Meaning I sleep with people that are inside the industry. I don't usually go out of my Is way. that for protection? Yes. Right. Definitely. Um, I do have friends outside of the industry, but I just prefer to keep it safe for the industry. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, what she means by that is, uh, you know, people in the industry are always being tested. Every two and, weeks. And they have to be, right? So you really want people in the industry kind of really only fucking themselves. Exactly. And the thing is, I was talking to a friend of mine who was not in the industry, and I just <coughs> out of curiosity, I said, when was the last time you got tested? And he goes, it was about eight months ago. And I said, well, how many partners have you had? He goes, 20. And I said, you've had 20 partners and you haven't been tested fuck. in that long. You need There's to go guy? get tested. Yes. The fuck? Exactly. Is he like a millionaire? Like no, he's my age. <laughs> the fuck? 20 right? girls. God he's damn. a player. But um, at the same yeah. time, it's like, there's a reason I do that because, and again, I love the people I work with, so why not, you know, fuck them off camera? It's fun. Versus somebody that, let's say I meet at a bar and then we end up having sex without protection, but then I have to go to work knowing, well, fuck, when are they getting tested? How do I know that they're clean? Well, what if I do get something and then transmit that to my performers? I'm not going to put them or myself in jeopardy. You know, I wish, uh, I, I, I wish we knew, like, how much civilians, non-industry people, right? Right test themselves truthfully because dude i don't think I, I mean well i've been married 30 years yeah okay but i do have friends that are single my age and i can honestly say i don't think they've ever been tested no like why would you get tested right you just because you think well i'll just put on a rubber right even fine. if they do that right so i'm wondering if there was if there was like an actual study or something they can do how many times, like men, between uh, up to age of fifty, mm -hmm. have tested themselves? I bet you it's not more than maybe twenty percent. But even if still, so, they're gonna lie about how long it's been, realistically. Right. So right. even if you do do the survey, there's a you know, yeah, good chance that they might either be telling the truth or not. Now, when you're only within the industry, <laughs> it's not that big. No. So if you fuck somebody. <laughs> Kind of everybody in their mama knows, huh? Yes. What's her face? Fuck, what's his face? Yes. <laughs> and the problem is, is I made the mistake of twice dating a producer and everybody decides to know and put their two cents into everything. And that is so much drama that I... On social media? Yes, absolutely. Oh, no, fuck. it's... No, I hate to admit it. Go ahead. I'm one of those who, when I see porn stars fighting like on Twitter or whatever, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> no, fuck that. I get the popcorn. I just start eating and watching this shit. Like, I'm one of those too. Yeah, because they'll fucking go off, dude. <laughs> yeah. And quick. The, I'll give you the perfect example. I uh, was dating Just Dave for a minute. Uh -huh. And uh, I terminated that just because we were better off as friends. But that was right around when I broke up with him, the whole Lee Raven situation. Right. So everybody's just after me. How dare you? You know, how could you date a monster? And I'm like, whoa, like, how did I even know any of this happened? You know what I mean? Right. I'm just the arm candy. Yeah, and like and like I said, it's a small world. It right? is. We all know but, each other, unfortunately. Because <laughs> like, you know, because okay, the the problem is people watch uh, shows like on Vice or HBO. They make it sound sometimes like there's thousands of porn stars living in Porn Valley, and that everybody's making billions of dollars. It's not so, no. dude. Like a lot of girls, a lot of girls live in Vegas now. Yeah, they do. It's um, cheaper. It's not like before. Uh, back in my day when I was having the big mofoware parties, everybody lived in Porn Valley. Right. Everybody. And I'm talking about like between 2001 and 2005. To me, those are kind of like, it seemed like the glory years the of Porn years. Valley. Yeah. Um, everybody and their mama lived here. But now, uh, and I've been learning that through my show. Like now, when, when I ask a girl to be on my show, I always started out now when, well, when you're in Los Angeles, 
would you like to come on my show? Right. I never had to do that. Mm-hmm. A lot of the girls aren't here no more. Yeah. Um, so, so it knows it's not like before, but so what I'm anyway, so there's not that many girls around. And so pretty much you kind of know everybody's business. Exactly. And the thing is a lot of these girls like to call themselves porn stars. And this is where I have that debate about that. Uh, Jason Brown actually said it best. He goes, look, I've been in the game for X, X amount of many years. Girls will burn in six months through a year, if not, you know, tops. And they like to call themselves that. But the thing is, is they do everything right off the roster. So they're doing double anal within six months and that's fine. But there's a better probability of the fact that you're going to burn out by doing that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when these girls are saying, oh, well, I'm a porn star for six months. No, you're not. You need to put in the time. You need to put in the effort. My roommate, Liver Vamped, has been doing this for six years. Uh, I started at 18. I'm now about to be 22. I've been doing this, you know, for the better part of three years. I did retire for a year or took a break, which is technically what it's called. But at the same time, I'm still putting in my work as it is. Yeah. So it's one of those situations, you know? Yeah, Liver Vamped was on on my show with Kat Monroe last year. You guys can find it on... on, uh, on my YouTube Canaporna channel. It's a really funny show. And uh, who, uh, the third girl was a uh, Sheena Ryder. Oh, God. And it was the three of them. So, um, yeah. But Livery Vamp, man, man, dude, she, uh, she has a tight little body. She's like a gymnast. She's so tidy. I know. Huh? Yeah, we go to the gym together every day. Yeah. She looks like she's like in pretty good shape. But she can fuck a bitch up, though. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. She's one of those people that's like really tiny and she's sweet and she'll love you. But she's got some sass like she will cut a bitch if she needs to. <laughs> now, does she do that um, fighting stuff or whatever? Yeah. At the, what's it called? Dames and Games. Dames and Games. Yeah. And that's every Thursday? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I might want to check that out one time. Where's that at? I have no idea because I haven't I gone yet. somewhere in case somebody's. Okay, somebody's calling, but I don't know. Do you no. want to wait? Little theater music playing. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, now, have you... Okay, uh, do you do that? Uh, do you do any dancing? You know, I haven't really started, and there's a reason being. I have, um, and my fans have known this for a minute, I have no cartilage in either of my knees. What? So, yes, um, I was born that way. Nobody was able to figure out how or why. It's just something I've been dealing with. Um, I recently started going through a different kind of therapy and really working it out by working out versus going to physical therapy, if that makes sense. So okay. doing different machines like the Stairmaster and the leg curl and leg extension actually strengthen around the knee and with within the knee itself. So it helps me actually able to have better knees. Um, I just started dancing recently and live revamped, ironically, is the one that's teaching me a lot of what she knows. Right. So, yeah, I am going to eventually, just not right now. But I am a feature at Legends Room, which is the first cryptocurrency Bitcoin strip club. <laughs> what is that? What the fuck is Bitcoin? You know, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I really don't know. I tried to spend five minutes into it and I couldn't pay attention. Um, yeah. From what I was told, it's basically, it's kind of like a stock market. And it's, let's give this bottle of water an example. It's a bottle of water. Now, people are going to say, oh, this is worth a million dollars. So I'm going to invest a million dollars into it. And then that's kind of how it goes, so on and so forth. And they're just adding more dollars and adding more value to it. So from what I was told, it's kind of like a stock market, but hmm. yeah, uh, I just know I'm a pretty face and I'm there to party and yeah. <laughs> now, what, what is this? Where is this at? It's in uh, Las Vegas and we're actually, um, I'm there on the fifth. Ironically enough, we are featuring at the Bellagio. Okay. So yeah, that's kind of a big deal. All right. Are you, oh, uh, okay. Well, you know what? Now that we're talking about it, where, where, what do you got coming up? Where are you going to, are you going to be anywhere? Get uh, any movies coming out? What uh, do you I got do- coming out that people can get? Um, or go see you somewhere conventions anything conventions um i think i will be at the exotica in miami definitely um as far as that my as far as scenes go i think that's pretty much it for appearances except for the legends room on the fifth will be a lot of fun um god as far as movies there's dogfight there's third degree there's lead the hardcore there's um there's a stepdaughter or step something for the um lead the hardcore again uh, there's this Japanese one, which I did that was very interesting. That was definitely one of my weirder scenes. Uh, <laughs> and I actually have a picture of it. You're going to die laughing. So basically what it is, is I walk in there and the actual videographer himself doesn't speak any English. So I'm going, well, shit, there's already a language barrier. And my male talent knew two words of English. So that made my job even oh, harder. Fuck. Now, where's this at? This was here. Actually, it was in Hollywood. And uh, I played a Japanese girl, and it was hilarious because the way that the translator was translating, it was just hilarious. <laughs> so anyways, I get through the scene, and he's teaching me words in Japanese to say that are, you know, naughty words. And so we're getting through the scene, and my, like I said, my male talent doesn't know any 
English. So when I'm trying to tell him to do what certain things. What was he? Huh? What was he? He was Japanese. Oh, okay. Yeah, and basically the, <laughs> the plot of the story was hilarious. It's, uh, they approached me on the street and they said, oh, you know, you're so pretty. Is there, you know, we're a Japanese talk show host. So is there any way we can take some pictures and hang out with you and do an interview? So I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. And so they end up, you know, taking me back to the hotel room and trying on an outfit and that whole shit. And so they keep basically offering me money. Well, you know, what if I gave you $1,000 right now? Would you fuck that guy since you've never had Japanese cock, as he would call it? <laughs> and so that's basically the whole scene is just me fucking the dude. And he bit my clit twice. And that's fine. Certain girls like it. I don't. And I tried to shove his head away from it even more, and he wasn't getting that. So he kept going more. So I actually squealed during the scene and not in a good way. <laughs> like biting, biting with yes, his teeth? Like oh, fuck. Kind of biting. It's yeah. not like a cute little nibble. It was like full on just chomping. I'm like, ah, like that hurt. <laughs> now, do you have like... Do you have like a big clit, normal size clit? I have a tiny clit from what I've been told. Like a nipple, that size? Yeah. Uh, and it was actually funny because I went to Planned Parenthood one time and she was asking me about my fiance. And I said, oh, you know, I kind of, you know, he's a little bit bigger. He's eight and a half, nine inches. And she looks at my vagina. I swear to God, this actually happened. She goes, oh, you're so tiny. How does it fit in there? And I was like, oh, my God, my actual gynecologist just asked me that. Um, I like big things in my vagina. And she just looked at me and started <laughs> laughing. Yeah. That was hilarious. You know, you just remind me. Oh, we got to talk about it before, before the show's over. You said you had surgery yes. to your pussy. Yes. What exactly did you do? So I met with Dr. George like he's in New York, and I was one of his test bunnies, and I love him, and he's one of the best doctors and medical spa hands down in New York. Uh, he had basically told me, he's like, look, um, I want you for Exotica. We just started doing this thing called the O-Shot and a vaginal rejuvenation. The O-Shot. Yes, the O-Shot, okay. and I'll get into both of them in a minute. Would you like to try it and if you do we will compensate you and then we'll basically that'll be our form of paying for you to be at exotica at our booths i said hell yeah i get two free surgeries and i get to be at exotica and get paid to do it hell wow yeah. so basically what the first surgery is is the o shot and what they do is they take about a pint or so of blood they'll take it out of your arm and they put it in the spinner and then they go ahead and they take the platelets from it and inject it into your clitoris and your vaginal opening and what that does is that brings back sensation wetness uh, fully rejuvenizes it and it makes you feel like you're 13 all over again from what i've been told Okay, you said in, they inject it in your clitoris. Correct. Wow. Into your clitoris. Uh, they obviously numb it and things like that. Oh, no. okay. Yeah, no, it was fully numb. Um, I couldn't feel anything. And uh, yeah, and it absolutely worked because the thing was, is I was having trouble coming after fisting myself so many times. I lost a sensation. I wanted that back. And once oh, I got wow. the O shot done, I was just as wet as a cucumber and I just couldn't stop coming. And that actually made the sensation so much more so. I come so much harder, so much quickly. Like, people actually think I'm faking it because it usually takes me, like, two to three minutes to come. Now I can do it in, like, 30 seconds. So you get wet pretty easy. Pretty easy, and it stays wet, and it's, yeah. Dang. Versus before, it's like I come a couple times, and then I'm dry, and then it's awkward. But this time, I'm just, I can't stop. And it's called the O-Shot. Correct. You can hear that? Yeah, it's it's great. I, I love it. And I don't even, and the funny thing was, you're supposed to go back after a year and a half for a checkup. I've never been back. It's been that good. <laughs> Wow. Now, yeah. You know, that seems like something that older women would want to do. Exactly. And it is right? for older women. But the thing is, because I have sex so often. My wife doesn't need it because, obviously, look. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. My wife's pussy. No, I get. I, you know, that's one thing I got to say about my wife. She has a beautiful pussy. It's healthy. It's wet. She has a beautiful clitoris and all kinds of stuff. And fuck, I just remembered we're on fucking Facebook. Her whole family's on Facebook. So, damn it. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, forget about what I said about my wife. Jeez. So vaginal rejuvenation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, basically what that is. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. My mom's on my Facebook. That's why I didn't advertise. Oh, are you and your mom cool now? Yeah, we're so close. Oh, that's good. Right? Yeah. Isn't it better that you're yeah. cool? You need your family. You need your parents. Yeah, so. she just uh, recently got a pit bull. He's about uh, eight months now, and he's a blue-nosed papered pit bull. He's the cutest little thing. He does this really cute thing where it's like he'll come up to your face, and then he'll lick you, and then he'll nibble you a little bit, and then he sees that he can get away with that. So he keeps biting you harder and harder until you tell him to stop. Oh, fuck. And the thing is, he's got a <laughs> he's a full fucking pit bull. He will chomp you if you yeah. let him. No fucking dog scares shit out of me. Same, dude. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> fuck. Right? But the vaginal rejuvenation, uh, basically it's a wand and it has lasers around it. And so there's no actual incision or anything. There's no cutting, which is perfect because there's no recovery time. So you go ahead and you stick it in the vaginal wall and basically the lasers uh, bring them together causing uh, scar tissue. So bringing your vagina, I used to be able to fist myself with literally within five minutes or so, if not less. Now I have to struggle to get it in there. <laughs> so damn, so your pussy is wetter than ever and tighter than ever. Yes. 
Man, I've never heard of this surgery. Yes, and I well, there are two surgeries combined, but I love it. Oh, okay. Oh, so it's the O shot. Yes, and, and then the vaginal rejuvenation. And then the vaginal rejuvenation. Yes. See, why can't they come up with guy, for stuff for guys? Right. I just want. I just wish I was three inches longer. That's it. That's you know, it. there is something called, no, I'm not saying this would work, obviously. And the thing with the O-Shot I love about it is that it's your own blood and it's your own platelet. So that's why it works. It's not like Botox where yeah. it you know, comes off within six months. Um, they have something called the P-Shot, which is kind of the same thing, but they inject it into your penis. Uh, because they're stimulating the blood flow, there is a potential, they're not saying there is, but potential that you can actually grow an inch. Yeah. Because, again, it's your own blood, it's your own skin. Okay, before we forget, we're going to do the fuck you segment real quick. Oh, Jesus. The fuck you segment is where I pick something to say fuck you to. Me and guests look at the camera and we say fuck you. Okay. Um, and you can do it or not. It's up to you. Uh, this uh, fuck you is to uh, basically all the cities and counties and the state of California that are still making it impossible to sell fucking cannabis. And they're taxing the shit out of it. Right. Seriously. So, so on the count of three, we're just going to say fuck you. And it's to all the cities and counties and the state of California that are making it a pain in the ass to uh, sell cannabis. That's such a long yeah. like intro just to say fuck you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, <laughs> One, two, three. Fuck, fuck you. you. There you fuck go. Fuck you guys. And fuck you people that are trying to take away my damn job. I like having sex and yeah. I like doing it. Yeah. So fuck you guys, okay? You Let me suck from unlimited dicks <laughs> and get paid for it. There you go. From Miranda Miller. She's telling you basically she's telling all the porn haters to fuck off. Yes. Every one of you porn yeah, haters. Fuck off. Fuck you to the porn haters. And Bible thumpers, fuck off. Now what you were saying? Now let me pay uh, I'm gonna play the outro real quick before we go off air. Here you heard it before. I don't think so. This is basically our legal disclaimer. Nice. This is a message from the California Legal Department. If you believe anything MoFo or his guest said, you probably believe crystal meth is good for you. Oh, Everything yeah. you heard tonight was for the <laughs> entertainment purposes only. In other words, MoFo was a dope addicted, pussy addicted, UFO abducted, Bigfoot believing USA patriot who say anything to make fuckers laugh or women open their legs. Good night, everybody. Do you believe in aliens and Bigfoot? I do. Okay, let's talk about that the next time. Okay. Because, uh, dude, you're awesome. Thank you. It's uh, 9 o'clock. We got to go. Uh, I wonder how this works. Does it, will this stay on Facebook? I think so. I think it stays on. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to end my show like I always end it with the tattoos on my hands. Uh, to everybody out there, believe in yourself. Yes. And que sera, sera. You're listening to Canapornia with your host, MoFo, only on LA Talk Radio.